Good morning, everyone. Today is November the 8th. My name is Jordan Smith, and I am the voice and the astrologer behind the webpage nonconformistconscience.com. There's a Facebook page and an Instagram page. And this week is pretty potent. I do these forecasts every week here on YouTube. And I post a written report on my webpage. And I cross post it on my other social media platforms for nonconformist conscience. And I also do a YouTube weekly uh, forecast video. So this week... Let's do this. Usually I put these out on Wednesday. I'm putting it out on Tuesday because today is the total lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Taurus, which that means that there is a full moon in the sign of Taurus that is happening um, within a few degrees of the North Node. So I wanted to talk about this and some of the other astrology that's going down. I'm going to take my glasses off just because I feel like there's a really bad reflection on there. Okay, so <clears throat> today it was, I live in Oklahoma, so I'm going to go by central time. There was a total lunar eclipse at 5.02 this morning. Some of you might have woken up and seen it. It was pretty awesome and cool, but Let's talk about what this means. This week is so potent. There are astrological conversations going down this whole week that really just amp up the energy of this eclipse. So let me break this down a little bit. Let's talk about an eclipse first, and then I'm going to go into uh, the sign of Taurus, what it means on an archetypal level, and then kind of synthesize these together. That way you guys can have a more clear, full picture of what this eclipse is meaning, what it can mean for you. So as I stated, an eclipse happens, there's eclipse season in the spring and in the fall. We're obviously in the fall time. So two weeks ago, we had an eclipse happening in the sign of Scorpio and that was the south node of Scorpio. There was a partial solar eclipse. So that was a new moon. Solar eclipses happen on new moons. And it was partial because it was not closely conjunct or uh, seated next to that south node. It was, um, you know, the south node is at 13. It was at like two or three degrees. Um, where that new moon happened. So it was a partial solar eclipse. Two weeks have gone by. It's, you know, we get a full moon every two weeks after a new moon. And then the cycle proceeds. Well, this is a total lunar eclipse because this eclipse is happening on a full moon. Full moons are lunar eclipses. I feel like they are more potent. They bring forth up a lot more emotional content and dynamics. This is a total eclipse because it is happening at 16 degrees Taurus. That is only three degrees away from the node. So it's this full moon is seated, seated really close to this north node in Taurus. So therefore, we have this total lunar eclipse. So let's talk about this even further. Lunar eclipses are really, really powerful. They can be felt most in the two weeks, uh, the day that it occurred, two weeks past. And it really symbolizes these archetypal dynamics that are going to be happening for the next six months for us. If you are someone who has something at 16 degrees, anywhere from 13 to 16 degrees Taurus, you're going to really feel this. If you have anything at 13 to 16 degrees, Scorpio, or any of the other fixed signs, which are Leo and Aquarius, you are probably going to be feeling this. Not only is this eclipse happening, but there are major 
astrological conversations going down that are speaking directly to this total lunar eclipse that's happening. So when we have a full moon total lunar eclipse, we are looking at emotional dynamics that are surfacing now. And for people who are really strongly feeling this eclipse, there will be events, whether internal or external, that trigger these emotional dynamics. These emotional dynamics aren't old. That's the thing. It's like people talk about, you know, it'll make things happen. And yes, it, it does. But it makes an awareness happen is the way that I view this. There can be an internal conflict or an external conflict that comes up as a way for us to really deal with the emotional conf content that is bubbling below the surface, meaning that this emotional content, these dynamics that are bubbling under the surface have been there for quite some time. It's just they are probably resisted or avoided or not acknowledged, or it can be something that you've kind of felt but you didn't want to deal with right and so what can happen is there can be re relational dynamics that happen as a way to trigger what is happening underneath the surface so that way resistance can't occur anymore and evolution can proceed because it forces this energy back in for us to ask why is this happening what's going on how can i fix this what do i need to do you know, all of that. And so <clears throat> there can be instances for people where all of this stuff gets triggered. And so whenever or if you're one of these people that this happens to, to really not only just look at what is externally happening that might have triggered this, but you really ask yourself, right? Why have I resisted looking at this? Why have I avoided this? Why did I not listen to myself whenever I had this feeling, this suspicion, this inkling that, you know, there was something going on that was underneath the surface that I, that I chose not to deal with, that I chose to look away from, right? And this can be something that's happening internally as well. So now that I've talked a little bit about what this lunar eclipse can do, why it happens and the people who are going to feel it, let's talk about the Taurus dynamic of this. So the archetype of Taurus. Taurus is really grounding. It can be, it's really, it wants to root, to ground, to stabilize. It's a stabilizing yin earth energy. So it's internalized. As an archetype, Taurus is about our relationship with self. It is from our desires that we have that come out of the sign of Aries and its ruler Mars. We go into Taurus and from those desires we have, we on a soul level or what we're desiring to work on in this lifetime, we have values that stem from these desires. And whenever we understand our values, then what stems from these values is what gives us meaning and life. And then from what gives us meaning, we then have our beliefs and our personal philosophies that stem from all of this. This is all contained within the realm of the Taurus archetype. Taurus is about being able to listen to oneself. Its ruler is Venus. So there is a function of listening. And because it is rooted in relationship with self, it's about being able to listen to oneself and the inner content that is coming up inside. It's the inner voice. It is about our survival instincts. From how we survive, we create values and give meaning and have beliefs, right, that are shaped all around us. So our survival instinct will kick into gear what our values are. This also includes our sexual values. This can be something that is coming up for people right now. 
are their sexual values. This is also about natural resources that we hold within or latent abilities that are natural resources that we can then utilize or use as a way to survive, to make money, to, uh, you know, to nurture oneself. This is also, Taurus is about self-preservation. Like if we're trying to survive, there can be a self-preserving quality, right? There is a strong will to survive within the Taurus archetype because it is about survival. It is about procreation on the most perfunctory level because in order for the species to survive, we then have to procreate. So it, we're dealing with all of these archetypes. Within Taurus, because it is a yin energy, meaning that the energy is going within its internalized energy, there can be a need to really ground oneself and to be by oneself. So to listen to oneself when needing to be by yourself. That in its own can create a circumstance or a conflict where if you are self-isolating too much, there can come an internal conflict. Because if you're isolating so much, there's no counterpoint. And because there's no counterpoint, evolution and growth cannot proceed. So there can be a crisis wrapped around this. On the flip side, there is a natural conversation between the signs of Taurus and Libra. And this can be not ever having alone time and always being in relations with other people and losing sense of self. And so this can create a crisis or a conflict, especially when we're trying to hold on to these types of relationships or dynamics where we now don't have our own values. We are now taking on what other people's values are through the function of codependent behavior. So this eclipse can bring up all of these things, especially if you have something at the 16 to 13 degree mark in Taurus or in any one of the fixed signs. This, when we become too rooted, the polarity of Taurus is Scorpio. And what that will do, will it will create a place where we have reached a limitation. And through good old Scorpio and its ruler Pluto for evolution to proceed, we get to learn about how we don't really have control over things. We can feel like we do, and there's an allusion to that. But whenever it reaches a certain limitation in order for evolution to proceed, Scorpio will pull on that Taurus archetype to get it to come out of its shell for it to not be so fixed, to create a mobilization. So there can be archetypal dynamics that are being triggered from this eclipse where people have lost a sense of themselves or maybe they're isolating too much. And so an inner conflict or crisis is occurring in order for them to deal with that limitation that they have reached. There can be latent gifts that people are starting to recognize about themselves that they can now use for their survival, but they are too afraid to use them or they don't know how to go about doing them. So they feel fixed or stuck. And so there can be situations that occur in order for them to create movement to become unfixed, unstuck. This is a... Eclipse that can help people understand their trauma responses. If we're talking about the survival instinct, which is seen and rooted in the Taurus aspect through its polarity, Scorpio, we get to uncover and get to the bottom and penetrate where those stem from and what our motivations are behind those survival instincts and our triggers surrounding them. So, things about the survival instinct, especially if you have trauma. Because right now with this eclipse, Uranus is conjunct this eclipse. So 
Uranus is about trauma. The eclipse and Uranus are both ruled by Venus right now, who's in the sign of Scorpio. So we are on the forward facing edge of learning even deeper and penetrating and getting to the bottom of our emotional, psychological, and relational dynamics. And this is an eclipse that is definitely going to trigger this for people, especially if they've been resisting them. So we can really come to an understanding with this Uranus being in this conversation with this eclipse about our triggers revolving around our trauma responses. So this is getting us to look at whether we fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. I want to assume that everyone knows what these mean, but I'm going to break them down a little bit because I feel like if you're watching this video and this is going on in your life, I don't want to just assume that you've heard these terms before. And these are psychological terms that really fall in line with the nature of this nodal axis that we have going on with these eclipses. So the trauma response or the survival response of fight is just that. It, it can be we're defensive towards people when they bring something up or we have an attachment style of insecure, you know, an insecure attachment that also goes along with fawning and freezing. Well, fawning. Freezing and flight is more of the uh, avoidant, whereas the other two are the anxious attachment styles. So there can be this defensiveness and really having to look at why we're defensive when something comes up and how that is a trauma response. How we aren't able to take criticism and why we aren't. You've got to think this is ruled by Venus and Venus is in the sign of Scorpio and that is ruled by Pluto. So we are looking at ancestral karma and past life karma and dynamics that come from a suppressive, repressive, resistant nature through religion and family conditioning as, as well with societal conditioning. So really looking at where have I been conditioned that I can't, I can't take criticism. Why am I defensive? Why do I want to argue or flip this on someone else? This is pulling in the fixed axis. So we can maybe have a narcissistic family system that pulls in that Leonian quality or a family system where we weren't seen for who we intrinsically were. And so it shapes and conditions us to be defensive or not be able to take perfectionism because we're trying to maintain our self-dignity and have self-preservation. And therefore, we want to deflect and put this on other people. And that is a form of resistance of evolutionary growth. So crisis can be coming up around this. Flight. This has to deal with the avoidant anxious attachment styles as well flight is not dealing with it. it it's it is walking away it's i don't need you or ghosting someone because we don't know how to deal with what is coming up we don't know how to deal with the emotional nature of what is coming up and so we will just ignore it or we will sweep it under the rug. Freeze is another one. Freezing is literally what it sounds like. It is, it's it's more of the quality of sweeping something under the rug. It's, it's I don't know what to do. So I am just going to be a doormat and I'm going to take this behavior. I don't know how to stand up for myself. I am paralyzed in the fear of perfectionism. All of these things that are external are triggering this woundedness in me. And I am like a possum who just freezes, you know, as a way to have self-preservation. These are these Torian dynamics. And then there's fawning. And fawning is very much this people-pleasing behavior. And this is where 
if you are someone who has lost their sense of self because you don't know how to be by yourself or grounded in yourself and you've taken on the values and the beliefs and what gives meaning to you that is conditioned by the people that you're in relationship with instead of really looking at well, what does give me me what do I value on a very personal soul natural level when an external event happens that is very much not being able to to deal with the uncomfortable nature of this situation and instead of standing up for yourself it's really much you know kissing someone else's ass for a lack of better term or you know doing the people pleasing behaviors because self-worth is wrapped around how others view me how other view me and I don't want them to view me in the wrong light because I take that on as shame and guilt and as my own instead of realizing that that is about them and not me and so I'm going to get into these behaviors of doing for others what I can't do for myself and when these behaviors that are trauma responses are triggered by the survival instinct they can work for a while and this eclipse can definitely show you where you've reached a limitation in one of these areas and have you really looking at your you know <clears throat> attachment styles and where maybe we don't know how to meet our own needs Taurus because we were taught through our conditioned reality maybe mom and dad growing up did everything for us so we've internalized that we're not capable of being able to do something or we're viewed as really strong which is another form of Taurus an archetype of it and therefore maybe one of our other siblings were more needy and our parents didn't meet our needs because they felt like we were strong and that we didn't need them. And therefore, we weren't really taught how to meet our own needs, even through that, through the illusion of being strong. There are so many dynamics that can come up with this, and it is a way for us to deeper understand the psychological content and to continue this journey of forming new values in this through the relationship with self, right? My dogs are going, sorry. Um, so not only is this eclipse happening, and I talked about Uranus being on this eclipse, but the sun is opposing Uranus. And so when we have a conversation of opposition, we know that there is an imbalance that has been created. And this can be the imbalance of maybe being too self-focused to where we're not acknowledging our trauma responses or the triggers or the way in which we interact with other people. This can also be on the flip side, only looking at our stuff and not looking at the whole picture where self-dignity has become limited because we're going about it in an unhealthy way where we're so self-focused that we're not paying attention to the other obligations that we have and so it's creating an external conflict in order for us to deal with why we're not doing that why we can't do that this can also be where you've reached a limitation in not being able to, how do I want to word this? Take responsibility for your own personal destiny and you're relying on other people because you don't feel capable and that stems from trauma. There can be so many of these types of dynamics coming up for people right now. And it can be really hard. There's also 
The sun is conjunct Mercury, though, and they're both in the sign of Scorpio. And this is actually really beautiful because there's this integration that's going on and they're in the sign of Scorpio. And so there's this really um, deep propensity for us to come to the understanding that we need as a way to continue the growth and the evolution that our soul is really desiring to have right now. So where we might have been confused or resisted or avoided and not been able to understand through that, this conversation of the sun conjunct Mercury lends itself to really having a deeper understanding and getting to the bottom of it and being able to express myself, getting to the bottom of what our hidden motivations are and where we might have manipulated it in the past, even though we weren't privy to it. We didn't know it was kind of hidden from us that we were actually doing that because it was our norm, because we were conditioned to go about life in that way. This week, we also have some aspects going with Neptune. There's a Venus aspect. There's a Mercury aspect. I believe there's, uh, let me look here. Yeah, and there's a Sun aspect. So Venus, the Sun, and Mercury are all going to be in beautiful conversations with Neptune. And this really speaks to from this energy that is just being, you know, it's like a vortex right now. It, it's if you think about a hurricane, which is a vortex, it builds up momentum by sucking in the energy below it from the heat. And this is a week where it can feel like that. And it is because there is this strong desire for us to learn what forgiveness is, okay? Forgiving other people, but more importantly with this Taurus dynamic, forgiveness of self. Forgiving oneself for the choices that we made in the past because we didn't know better, but now we do. Forgiving others, but owning the choices that we made that led to those circumstances instead of feeling victimized, looking at the whole and penetrating and getting to the bottom, what motivated us to make choices that landed us in situations where it just enacted the trauma because it's what was known, right? With Scorpio energy, and there's so much of it this week, where we reach limitations is where we feel power. And where we feel power is from what is already experienced and known. And these are the areas that are going to be reaching the limitations. And so really having the responsibility of owning the choices that we've made. That doesn't mean that we need to take on the shame and guilt of others and what they've done. But it means to get out of being a victim with these you know, conversations happening with Neptune and really understanding the full scope of the truth. And there's a forgiveness that happens with other people towards other people. And if we can't have it, to be able to forgive that part of ourselves for right now and to know that that's really human, that we can't do that right now, that there will come a day if we're striving for that, to have a deeper understanding and to really be able to have that forgiveness. There are lessons in deep forgiveness with everything that's going on in the sky this week. There is a need to really express in some type of form, fashion, or way this week, whether it be with the hands, so writing or doing art, or even with our voices, because there's so much Venus and Mercury energy going on. This is a time where if you've never been to therapy or any type of uh counseling, whether it be astrological or of a more individuated Jungian, you know, approach of going to talk therapy or trauma, um, trauma therapy, this would be a good time that if that comes into your, your mind, that maybe that would be a good thing for you, that I would follow that. Listen to that inner voice. Remember, this is an eclipse in Taurus. So the need to really listen to that inner voice as a way to guide you, to understand on deeper levels the things that are going on inside and why we are the way we are to get to that bottom line. This is what this week is about. And 
I know I've talked about some heavy things, and so I want to wrap this up by saying that eclipses can also be really stabilizing and mobilizing. Because the things that we've been working so hard to get to the bottom to where we've had confusion or couldn't understand or we kept repeating and it's like, oh, I'm just so tired reaching that limit. This is a time where it can be mobilizing and get us out of the fixed energy. It can pull us in. And I want us to remember that we do not evolve and grow through the analytical just the mind we grow through our emotions and so Scorpio is the polarity of this Taurus energy and we've got these beautiful aspects that are in Taurus aspecting this Neptune and the sign of Pisces that really speaks to diving into the emotional body and allowing everything the waves to wash over that it's actually what feels scary and like a crisis and terrible is really cleansing and healing whenever the dust settles and it's all said and done. I always quote something that is, if you have ever been to AA, and this seems just so perfect for this because there's this Neptune stuff going on, is there is an expression that you've got to heal it to feel it. And so with that, I want to wrap up this week. And my computer froze. I hope you guys can hear me, but I was at the end. I love all of you guys. You guys have a beautiful week and just know that Whatever happens, it is going to be beneficial in the long term. And I am here for every part of it. And I will see you all next week.